Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare and sometimes self-care. So if that's your vibe, please consider hitting subscribe. And today I'm coming at you with another mineral sunscreen review. This time we're talking about the Make Preem Defense Me Calming Sun Cream. Now, I actually recently covered this in a episode of This or That, so you may want to check it out, but I really felt like this, you know, sun cream deserved its own video review, especially because this is actually a renewed version version of a product that I reviewed all the way back in 2019. This is the renewed version of the Defense Me Blu-ray sun cream, which I gave a pretty favorable review back in the day. So I want to talk about this renewed version and let you know all my thoughts and if I think it's worth it or not. So give the video a big thumbs up and let's jump right in. <music> So let's jump into the ingredients list. And this is an interesting mineral sunscreen in that it's only using zinc oxide to give the SPF protection. Now this is claiming an SPF of 50 and a PA of plus four. And it has been verified, the test results have been released and the average sunscreen that they found is about SPF 50.3 with the average PFA coming in around 17. Only using zinc as a filter seems okay to me. I mean, this is a very stable and broad spectrum filter that covers UVB, UVA 1 and 2. So for that to be doing all the heavy lifting in this sunscreen, I don't think you have anything to worry about with it not containing titanium dioxide. And I'm actually seeing a trend towards a lot of like zinc only sunscreens. Not sure what that's about, but like I said, this filter definitely checks out. You'll also notice that the ingredients list does not contain any drying forms of alcohol, artificial fragrance, or essential oils. Now this is a bit of the, a departure from the old Blu-ray sun cream, which did contain essential oils in it. But I do need to point out there are some fruit extracts here on the ingredients list. Generally not a red flag um, for most people, and it certainly isn't a red flag for me. But I do have to point out that this cream actually does have a scent to it. It is not completely scentless. There is like a pleasant, maybe even you could call it like a slight fruity smell to it. It is very, very faint. You really got to get your nose up in there. You know, when you get it on the back of your hand, you really got to smell, to smell it. It doesn't linger, it's not heavy. And after you apply it, you're not gonna smell it at all. However, I do suspect that these fruit extracts are imparting a very, very light, minimal masking fragrance. Because as you know, uh, extracts can in and of themselves contain some of their own natural fragrance. And so there is a little bit of that happening here. In terms of texture, I would call this a medium weight sunscreen. Um, it definitely has a little bit more like heft and presence on the skin, but I would not call it heavy. I would not go that far at all. Um, but this definitely is a little bit Bit more on the medium side and there is a bit of moisture here too as you work it into your skin you're gonna notice a bit of emolliency it's not um greasy I wouldn't call it greasy but it definitely does have some moisture so this is something big to note if you're not looking for moisture and emolliency in a sunscreen this may not be for you but it does actually have a nice creamy spread on the skin um, I think that this absorbs in the skin pretty nicely but with most mineral sunscreens I do find that you do need to kind of work it into your skin just a little bit more. I think a lot of that has to do with the white cast and because the white cast on the sunscreen is a lot more noticeable, you may find yourself working this into your skin just a little bit longer than maybe other sunscreens that you're used to. That was at least my experience with this. I did feel like I had to kind of work it in a little bit more, but on the whole, I wouldn't classify the uh, texture itself to be hard to spread or like very dry or super chalky or anything like that. I think it's just kind of like what comes with the territory with mineral sunscreens. Now, as I mentioned, there is a white cast here and I was pretty concerned when I first put this on my skin because it's very white. Like I was really getting that very ghostly effect and I was like, I do not like this at all. This is not gonna work. But when I stepped back, you know, after I really worked it into my skin and I stepped back and I let it dry and give it the absorb time, I noticed that white cast significantly did fade. It did kind of calm down. It was still noticeable. 
Like, I'm not gonna lie, it was still noticeable, but it was just like so much more workable and doable than when I first applied it. So there is a little bit of like an adjustment period with this sunscreen, it seems like. So don't be too horrified at first. It does seem to kind of settle into the skin. All that being said, obviously, if you're more blessed with melanin than I am, it is going to start to become a bigger issue, right? The white cast here, it's not ignorable. It is obvious. It is noticeable and it is going to um, build upon itself and be a little bit more noticeable with, um, you know, more melanin on the skin, obviously. Something else I have to talk about when it comes to white cast is because it's a little bit more creamy and a little bit more medium um, in its thickness, I do find this is the type of mineral sunscreen that can build up around darker hair. My big issue is my eyebrows. <laughs> I, Whenever I wear this sunscreen, it's always like really just kind of like hanging out around my eyebrows. The, the kind of like white cast around the dark hair does seem to be a little bit more obvious. I do also want to bring up the fact that this may not be a beard friendly sunscreen because you're going to have the exact same issue that I have with my eyebrows working it into that hair it's still going to kind of build up around darker hair it's going to be a little bit more obvious so this may not be the choice you know if you're rocking a beard something I talk about with every mineral sunscreen that I review is the drying factor because as you may know zinc and titanium the mineral filters that are commonly used do actually have like an oil controlling property to them that's not going to be a great match if your skin is already dry um, or if you're prone to dehydration um, so I do a combination skin. I am oily in my T-zone, but I'm pretty like pretty dry in my U-zone and I'm also prone to dehydration. So it's like the perfect combination here for mineral sunscreen to kind of not always be a match with my skin and to kind of make it feel dry and tight at the end of the day when I wash it off. Now, if you've never experienced what I just said, like if you've never felt like your skin is dry after wearing mineral sunscreen, you can feel confident and kind of like ignoring what I'm about to say about this sunscreen because I don't think it's going to apply to you. However, um, if you have had those issues in the past, perk up your ears because this does apply to you. This is not an experience that everybody has, but some people do. I would say the drying factor on this is not bad. Okay, it's obviously there. And if I had to put it on a scale of like, this is so bad, I can't tolerate it, I have to wash it off my face immediately. Um, and yeah, it's doable. Like I just have to put a little extra moisturizer on at the end of the night, and then I'm fine. If, if that's the scale, this sunscreen from Make Prem is like, here like it's not quite in the middle it's like a little bit more towards that eh, i can deal with it kind of scale this is just my experience but it, it does have a little bit of that that drying factor to it even with the extra emolliency and moisture to this sunscreen i do still you know experience that but it's not going to be the case for everyone if you are a little sensitive to the drying factor of mineral sunscreens though, know that this is a little bit more on the tolerable end of things. So let me share with you my thoughts and experience with this sunscreen. I've actually been testing a lot of mineral sunscreens behind the scenes and I can confidently tell you that this one from Make Prem is probably one of my favorites. It's probably my second or third favorite that I've tried. Honestly, it really does uh, rise to the top of my mind of something that I really enjoyed. And that's actually saying a lot because like, as you know, mineral sunscreen is not really my jam. <laughs> I'm definitely more of a chemical sunscreen girl. That's what I reach for, um, for a lot of different reasons, but I'm always game to try new mineral sunscreens. And very occasionally, you know, it is what I'm going to reach for, especially when my skin is feeling quite sensitive. And this is definitely something I can see myself reaching for in those situations. So like I said, it is actually saying a lot that I do enjoy this. And I did really want to do this review because I do um, have a review out there of the original version which was called the blue ray sun cream and I reviewed that all the way back in 2019 which just feels like a completely different era so I do remember enjoying that one as well I gave it a, a pretty good review um, and this is the reformulated version and I do think there have been some upgrades here so I thought it was worth um, updating you if you've watched all that way back on my channel um, and I do think that they've definitely upgraded the 
ingredients here. I think the ingredients are great. Um, I think it's a lot more sensitive skin friendly than the older version was, which did contain um, an essential oil. So this one doesn't have uh, the essential essential oils in it um, or artificial fragrance, which I think is a good thing. I just don't really think essential oils belong in sunscreens. Let's talk about those plant extracts that I brought up earlier, because that may have been a red flag for some of you um, who do not like to use fragrance in your skincare products, or maybe are a little bit hesitant about plant or fruit extracts because of sensitivity. And I can't guarantee uh, what your experience would be with something like this, but I can tell you I didn't get any irritation from the fruit extracts in here. And actually, um, you know, I have to tell you, if I was not testing this sunscreen, knowing that I had to deliver every single detail of this to you and to our community, I don't know that I would have even picked up on the scent of this sunscreen at all. It is just so faint. Um, if I was just applying it and just being like, yeah, I like this sunscreen or I don't like this sunscreen, I don't think I would have picked it up. The only reason I thought to put it on the back of my hand and shove my nose in there and see if there was a scent is because of you, because <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me if there was a smell. And um, there is, but it's just so faint, I barely, I barely picked up on it. You know, I like the texture of this, even though it's a little bit more moisturizing than maybe I would uh, choose for myself in the summertime. Um, this is something I would gravitate towards the rest of the year, because <laughs> it can be quite cold where I live, unless it's summertime. Um, so maybe a little bit too moisturizing for me in the summer with combination skin but the rest of the year I think this is just the right amount of moisture that my skin really appreciates and even though it is like I said a medium weight feel on the skin it does not feel so heavy that like my skin feels suffocated I actually recently tested a mineral sunscreen that I had described as like it was so heavy sitting on top of my skin that my skin felt like it was getting hot underneath you know what I mean like it, I know skin doesn't like really technically breathe, but like when you put such a heavy layer on your skin, it's almost like you're overheating underneath it. Ugh, that's like no good. That is like a, like a no go, right? This sunscreen from Make Frame, even though it's moisturizing and medium weight, it does not have that feeling of occlusivity and like just suffocating your skin. It doesn't sit on top of your skin like that. I think it just has a really pleasant, nice, moisturized feel, but still breathable and airy on the skin. And I think that that is so important when it comes to actually wanting to wear a sunscreen. This is something that I would actually still want to wear. Um, I do have to point out like a downfall in the the texture though um, and that is actually the fact that it kind of made me a little bit greasy looking in the middle of the afternoon and I was doing some side-by-side -side comparisons with this and other sunscreens so I know for a fact this sunscreen did actually make me look more greasy I wasn't just greasy that day you know what I mean um, so I was looking quite a bit shinier on the one side of my face and I was like eh. That's not, that's going to be a deal breaker for some people, right? It was okay for me. I don't, I like a little bit of do, but I have to point it out because it can get a little, it can get a little gross, right? You know what I mean? So, um, this was not a like nice dewy glass skin look. This was pretty greasy. Um, and you may want to, um, powder down, um, on this sunscreen or when you, like when you reapply, let it dry and then powder down on that just to kind of help cut down on some of the, the shiny look that you're going to get. So overall, I do enjoy this sunscreen. I I think it's pretty good, but I don't think it's perfect. Let me break it down for you. The cons here. I think that definitely the fact that it might make you look shiny or greasy in the middle afternoon could be a deal breaker for some of us, right? The white cast could be a deal breaker for some of us. For me, again, just speaking from my personal experience, I'm kind of like borderline, like I'm fine with it. Like, is, is it perfect? No, but I'm fine with it. If you are more blessed with melanin, you may not want to mess with this one. I'm going to be very bluntly honest about that with the white cast. And like I said, if this is something that, you know, with darker hair, maybe a beard, you don't want to mess around with it kind of clumping there. Again, this is not the one for you. Um, I think those are probably the biggest drawbacks with this sunscreen, but there's some great pros here too. The fact that it's moisturizing but not heavy on the skin is huge. I think it has a pretty nice texture. It does take a little bit more elbow grease, but overall, it's not dry, it's not chalky, and it's not hard to spread on the skin. And I think the ingredients list is pretty nice too. Um, you know, fruit extracts aside, I do think that they have um, done a really nice reformulation and a nice upgrade on this from the original Blue Ray Cream. So, with all of that in mind, I'm going to give this a rating of 7.5 out of 10. And this is really going to be recommended for people with like combination skin, maybe up to dry skin 
skin because of the moisturization factor. I think if you have oily skin, this may not be the one for you, but I do have a recommendation for you, and that's gonna be the Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Natural Sun Cream, which I did a review for right up here, and I also did a this or that between these two. So I'll link both of the videos in the uh, description box below. So are you team mineral or chemical sunscreen? Let me know in the comment box below. I can jump back and forth between the two, but I will say I'm a little bit more on the chemical side of things. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, please do consider hitting subscribe if you have not already. I release a lot of new skincare content just like this video, so you may uh, consider turning on notifications too so you're never out of the loop when the new videos drop. I hope you are healthy, happy, and safe, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.